All right, so I'm gonna admit I got lost in the lore of Dark Souls. Specifically, I did the comic run. Looked up a couple things that I was confused about, but mostly stuck to, I read all the comics for Dark Souls um, and broke down the scaling. I just completely went through all the comics, put all the scans in my member server. If you want to become a member, uh, comment down below and I'll get you the 80% off through Cash App. But um, I posted all of them and then I realized, hey, I should probably go back through and make a little scaling guide, at least to the bones of the Dark Souls comics cosmology. Now, it was explained in almost all of these comics at the beginning that they do tie into the games. They do borrow from the game. Some things are changed because of perspective. For instance, some stories are told from different viewpoints, so knowledge is limited to those characters in the run. But overall, most of this should apply to the games. I will be going back and covering game lore when I get into the games, but the comics were awesome. The lore is amazing. I did hear at least one of these runs really sticks to the lore from the first game, so I'm super excited. If you like Dark Souls, game lore, horror stuff, all that stuff, because this place is terrifying, I promise. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. But without further ado, I'd like to begin with my part one of the horrifyingly broken scaling and verse that is Dark Souls. So first up, let's talk about who I would consider to be the big dogs in the verse, and that would be the Primordials. Uh, it could just be one, it's kind of vague in the comics, but it's interesting enough, and there's enough material provided in the matter that I felt like talking about it. So, like I said, compared to other aspects, it's not as heavily explained in the comics as other things, but like I said, there's enough credence to the argument that I felt it's worth mentioning as a top layer. Primordials would be the beings whose shadow is considered to be the endless void and can control time, life, and death. There are other primordials who combat this endless void, as they are the ones who set forth the role of heroes in the verse for all of eternity. The primordial forces are infinitely beyond the soul of a man. The soul of man is called absolute and boundless in this same run. In another run, a soul was used to casually create a dimension. Lastly, concepts like humanity and everything they deal with are considered insignificant to that of the endless void. Um, and if you want to quantify all this objectively by yourself after I present what I found in the comics, you can. But I'll go ahead and give you guys my interpretation of of how strong this was in the comics. I believe the primordial layer is a couple layers into outer. Uh, and you'll see more clearly why in a minute when I break down the other layers. But at this point, I would have it starting off at the big top, a couple layers in outer. For So for all those big outer versatile heads out there, there you go. There's your bone. There's your treat. But um, of course, this only literally applies to like one or two maybe characters or beings in the verse so it's not that big of a win for dark souls but it's still pretty interesting to see how high it scales next layer we have time this at its highest form to me could be considered outer versal time as a concept in the verse actually scales very high in this verse of dark souls at least for the comics Time is stated in the comics to contain the endless cycles of life and death. It is also containing forces like human souls, which are called boundless and absolute, like I mentioned. It is within eternity or within time that the cycle of good versus evil and light versus darkness occurs. The trickle of time and its mysterious workings are said to scale directly above even death itself. The human soul can withstand it because the soul is actually an aspect of eternity itself. So that's one layer. That's some of the reasonings for why time is so high to me. It contains concepts like life, death, like uh, light and darkness. Um, eternities, I believe, could possibly be primordial, but it also could be just the highest form of time. And it seemed heavily time related, so I'd probably go with that. But yeah, time 
it's pretty cool to see concepts like that be taken to extreme levels to where different higher forms of time still apply to beings that are immortal or unaffected by normal time so it's pretty interesting um by the way if you want individual videos on categories or characters that fit into these categories definitely comment down below next layer to talk about humanity conceptually aka the souls of humanity or the resiliency inherently given to that of the souls of humanity so you could put this anywhere from multiversal to baseline outer this really depends on how you interpret boundless and the other feats attributed in the comics to the human resiliency and soul they are said to scale above the enemies of you um humanity that they directly face this would include their dealings with the cycle of life and death and light versus darkness throughout time humanity however is still subjected and the soul is subjected to time uh, at least time in its higher form it is absolute the human soul is and can withstand time because it is a fragment of eternity and even death can't withstand such a force this makes sense as humans who call upon their spirit and soul in battle in the comics are the ones who are used as avatars to combat the darkness and death itself in an effort to keep the concept of life alive in reality. Next layer, the darkness. I believe this is relative to the soul, but likely given that humans can fight back against it and neg it, sometimes with just one human soul as a champion, uh, humanity has a slightly better argument in the comics as a concept and with the resiliency of scaling above. However, let's talk about the darkness. You know, it's one of those less talked about layers, but it has a couple instances in the comics that makes it interesting. So this seems to be the force that works in the favor of the endless void. This produces otherworldly monsters and beings and death, as well as to go against the light, humanity, and the flame of light. Also, early on in the runs, it was stated that there was something worse, worse than death itself in play that was manipulating death. So I believe that's where we could fit something like the darkness in here that is, is mentioned as something at least once. Now let's talk about life and death, the cycle itself. This could be multi to hyper. It seems to occur in all realms and realities, even dream ones. I would say both are relative. In the short run, or like the initial battle, if these two concepts occur, life and the flame of life seem to neg death, especially when flourishing. However, death will eventually come, and when it does, it is horrible when it finally returns to battle the light that's diminishing. However, on the other hand again, the will to live and the hope of life seems to neg the effects of death for those who crave life enough. So, it's a toss-up. But it is a fun discussion to have, and I do think there is a fair case to be made for both of them being relative. Alright, so those are kind of like the big concepts in the verse and how they scale. Now I'm going to talk about briefly a few of the items, and then just an interesting piece of scaling I found. First item I want to talk about, the Pyre Blade. This could neg the reality warping and creative orb of extremis in the weaponized soul of Parnethia. This sword is forged from multiple souls of forefathers. The multiple souls explains why it's so powerful. Next item I want to talk about, the Orb of Extremis. This allows for the creation of entire realities, verbatim stated, I'm not even wanking, soul draining, life, and death manip, and the complete control over the realities it forges. Also, this includes the human soul as well being weaponized. Lastly, let's talk about a piece of evidence I thought was interesting that I found in the comics. Dragons should be above gods. Dragons are immortal, and they were able to fight and hold off gods who were stated to be assisted by allies at that time. Gods and man couldn't do anything to sway the tides of battle until they got the arcane prep health of the big rat the big snitch himself, Seath the Scaleless, or Seth. I don't know what they call him in the game, if he is in the game. But uh, yeah, my homie Scaleless, Mr. Scaleless, ratting on everybody to get what he wants. But anyways, that's the initial dive into the horrifying scaling of the endless cycles of life and death and Dark Souls, where you don't really get out 
you just struggle and try to overcome as best as you can. Let me know what you guys think. Tell me what individuals videos you want to see on Dark Souls. I'm thinking about doing a series where I take characters from other verses and see how they would fare in Dark Souls. To what level could they impact the verse? Could they even break the cycle? Would they survive the cycle? Or would they become a part of it? Or would they even eventually challenge things like the primordials or life and death itself? If you want to see that, comment down below. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. It's been your boy YFE, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.